But I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God that He's opened it for me, brother. Uh, thank you. And raised up so Lucas, thank you. Any kind of warmer here? Put those up at least 70. That's got to 74. I can see it from here. Huh? Put them on at least 70. Please. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I preach a lot about living in the uh, last days because that's what we're at. Y'all believe that? That's exactly where we're at, living in the last days. But it ain't it ain't enough just to hear about the end time. We have to prepare for them. And in these last days, there's going to be a lot of things happen, but also God is going to send us a, what we call the latter rain. I remember years ago, God told us about there was going to come an outpouring just before the coming of Jesus. And it's going to be like this outpouring was going to be like oil. And then it's going to be like fire. And like a liquid oil and a liquid fire. And it was going to come in and consume people and take them over. There was a great big gate that the Holy Ghost people was inside of this gate. Handmaids was in this gate. Sons, daughters, servants, handmaids, young men, old men. They was in this great big gigantic gate. And they wanted to do something for God, but they was uh, something was holding them back. Well, they couldn't. And something was stopping and preventing them. And he saw this vision that the devil was taking over the world, spreading darkness everywhere. And wars and violence Drugs, pestilence. Look like the devil had it, was having his way, like it is right now in America, like it is right now in the world. There's no real uh, spirit, no real awakening like it's supposed to be. And the devil knew this, and he knew a lot of the churches had fallen asleep, a lot of the people had had drawn back and he knew that uh, he had a, this particular generation in his grip and everywhere he went he was spread in darkness and every once in a while he would look back over his shoulder with a hideous grin and he would laugh at how he was taking the world and look like 75% of the world had been put up under his dominion and under his curse, under his darkness. And I remember uh, the man of God was like a little boy and he was right beside, right beside Jesus. And he said, Jesus, aren't you going to do something? Look at how the devil is killing. Still, you know, just since 2020, over 100,000 people died from this drug that's coming across the borders. 
in 2020. 2021, same thing. 2022, same thing. I hear a half a million people have um, been killed in this war over there with Russia and Ukraine. In, in Ukraine. And I hear at least thousands, thousands, tens of thousands are dying right now in Israel from this war that's going on over there. And some kind of new uh, disease, uh, something that's related to the COVID come out of China. What are they calling it? The uh, J? Huh? Something come out of uh, China. And all of these things. Look at the cities. Look at God said there was going to be a time when we're not going to have a real leader. And the devil is taking advantage because we don't have a good, strong leader. Look at how they're marching across the border. I'm talking about from over 100 nations. Right now, uh, there are, I think, 15,000 is headed across the border. There's been Millions have come into this country. And there are, a lot of them is terrorists. A lot of them is up to no good. And America's fiction is, be, is being set up. And she's going to fall from within. And the only thing that can stop it is the Holy Ghost revival. The only thing that can hold back the devil from doing what he's planning on doing. And things are going to get worse and worse for the wicked. 2024, you know, it's from, from, from 2020, I guess from 2019, look how things have been progressively declining, going down. And 2024 is going to even get worse. So that means God's people going to have to get something. I was telling two preachers the other day. I said, we need a good, strong leadership in the White House to help build our military up and to help this area, that area. And they looked at me with that uh, nonchalant, well, you know, God is in control. I said, yeah, but he wants us to be in control. He wants us to stand together. He said, if my people will pray and seek my face and turn to me, yes. I will heal their land. I heal the land. I'll take all these perverts out. I'll take the drug addicts out. I'll take all this killing and rioting and looting out. If my people, but God's people are like, he said, warn them that are at ease in Zion. Sit back looking for somebody else to pray it through. Waiting on somebody else to stand in the gap. Waiting on somebody else to fast. Waiting on someone else to spearhead it. And he said, if my people, which are called by my name, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, I will heal. I will heal their land. Hear from heaven. You know, I'm read some scriptures here in just a moment, but it ain't going to, revival ain't going to come if we're just, y'all heard me use that word, if we're just a, a spectator, is it? What's going to bring revival is a participator. Not somebody just sitting, uh, uh, sitting on the sidelines, hoping, crossing their fingers, and hoping that it comes, you know. But God, as I told y'all, He's going to send his, if, if man don't wake up, God's going to send his angels. He's going to send his servants. He's going to send a 
a host of heaven. He's going to send the spirits of just men that have gone on to be with the Lord and have been made perfect through the blood of Jesus and through their uh, testimony and through what Jesus done for them. There's a hidden army. I heard Brother uh, uh, Saturday night, uh, Brother Fuller, he was reminding y'all about how that I was said there's a hidden army that God is fit to raise up that the devil don't know about. And that's true. The devil don't know about it. And he thinks he got things wrapped up. But the man of God, he was standing as a little boy before Jesus. You know, like I was telling y'all, when you come to Jesus, you got to come to him as a child. I don't care if you're 50 years old in Jesus. I don't care if you got saved 100 years ago. You still got to have a humble spirit. He said, except you become as children, as a little child, you cannot enter in to the kingdom. Child is innocent, helpless. A child needs help. They can't even, when they, uh, you know, uh, use the bathroom on themselves. They got to help somebody to help them. When they uh, do a number two, <laughs> they got to have some help. They got to have the help to be able to get in the shoes, to get in their clothes. They have to have the help because they don't know how to uh, co communicate. So they, the way they communicate, they just start crying. And they want something when they start crying. Or maybe something hurt them. Or they'll come, and even a little girl, mama. You know, go in the store. Mama, you know, daddy. God said, you got to be like a little child. Mama, Jesus, touch my body. Jesus, touch my home. Jesus, touch my family. Jesus, help me to get through this trial that I'm going through. Jesus, you see all of this that I'm going through in my body right now. Have mercy upon me. Y'all excuse me, I'm about to try to put this on mute. But they don't mute for me, Brother James. I'm sorry, I usually turn these things off when I'm in church. But you know, we forget at times. You know, when you're in a meeting out there, uh, and the boss is having a meeting, it's very disrespectful. To him, when everybody fell self on his court. Wait a minute, boss. Hold up. No, you don't. You don't disrespect your boss. But you turn that phone off, or you put it on mute, or you leave it at home, don't you? When it's time to come before the Lord, you know we uh, put that phone on mute because we want to hear from God. We don't want nobody calling us when God's talking to us. But when we are busy, you know, we don't want to be so caught up in the technical and in all the cares of life until we can't be still and hear from heaven. We need to hear from heaven. And, you know, when you get, when you come to God, you come to him and you repent of your sins. And when you repent of your sins, you have a remorse. You let the Lord know you're sorry. He put a conviction in you that you are a sinner. How I many of you, when you got saved, you, did, you didn't get, you had to, the Spirit had to convict you. And that Spirit convict you because you heard the preaching of the Word. And the Spirit and the Word convicted you and let you know that you, your life you was born a sinner. You were shaped in iniquity and sin. You was conceived and you had to be born again. And, it, and for you to be born again, the spirit had to come. The spirit of truth had to open up your eyes. The God of this world how blinded people. The only thing that's going to open up their eyes is bringing to them the truth. You should know the truth. And the truth uh, take the scales off. The truth 
will cause you to see what you need help. A lot of people out there that need help, they don't they don't have uh, the real truth. That's why they link to the this and they link to that. They link to money. They link to drugs. They link to alcohol. They link to perversion. They link to uncleanness. They link to everything because nobody telling them. Jesus said, "I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the light. I'm the way out of darkness. I'm the way of the truth. I'm what's real. People out there wondering what's real. They get involved in all kind of." Occults and every kind of evil and witchcraft and everything, trying to find what's real. He said, I'm the way, I am truth, I'm what's real. He said, you're not going to find reality out there in the world. You're not going to find it out there on the streets. You're not going to find it in the clubs. You're not going to find it only in me. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the what? I'm the life. I'm the life. I come that you might have life. The thief come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Life in your spirit. Life in your soul. Yes. Life in your body. Yes. God wants us to have life in our spirit so our, so our spirit can commune with him, so our spirit can talk with him, so our spirit can fellowship with him. He wants us to have life in our soul, our soul and our will, our, our mind, our emotions. He want our soul to be full of life and he want us to have life in our body, our physical body. I want you to be made whole in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. And I want not only you to be full of life, but out of your belly will flow rivers of living water to a world that's sick, to a world that's suffering, to a world that's lost. To a world that's out there in darkness. I'm going to put my spirit in you. And you're going to testify. You're going to bring them out of the curse. You're going to bring them out of darkness. You're going to bring them out from under the captivity. And the bondages that the world has got them upon them. I am that that I am. And I am has come down to deliver my people. And he's coming to bring deliverance. He's coming to bring deliverance. Hallelujah. Now, we're not going to get deliverance from traditions. From doctrines of men. Only through Jesus. Only through Jesus. But it's not enough for us just to come to church. It's not enough for us just to hear about the end time. We're going to have to get out of the stand, out of the bleaches, and get out there on the field and experiment and get out there and tackle these devils and throw this word out there and make a touchdown for Jesus. Aren't we? It ain't enough just to be on the sidelines. I mean, you want to be just a spectator. If you're just a spectator, you don't get no money. It's those that's get out there on the field. Man, they are the ones that, you know, get the reward. Huh? Somebody said, put me in, coach. We look at somebody and tell them, the Bible says, be you doers of the word. Not just hearers. If you're just a hearer, you're just a spectator, a bystander. But you have to get in here and become a participator. Is that right? First Samuel, I believe it, Samuel chapter 1 and verse 34. I'm going to show you somebody that was a doer. I'm just going to read this right quickly. I wasn't going to read these scriptures, but I'll go ahead. Samuel chapter 1 verse 3. Chapter 3 and verse 4. Chapter 1. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 4. I mean chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 4. I hope I'm reading it right. Chapter 1 verse 3 and verse 4. 
And this man went up out of his city uh -huh. yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yes. In Shiloh. Uh huh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phineas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penia, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters portions. Is that Samuel? Yes, sir. Chapter 1? Yes, sir. We'll read now. Chapter 3 and verse 4. I might have wrote the wrong thing down. That the Lord called Samuel and he answered. Now, now listen. The Lord called Samuel and Samuel answered. Samuel, just a kid. Just a, a little boy. Samuel was given to Hannah because Hannah cried out, I want a man, child. I want a baby. And she was barren. Couldn't have no children. Couldn't have any children whatsoever. And the Lord heard her cry. And when he heard her cry, the Lord gave her a boy. Didn't he? Gave her a boy. Come here. Gave her a boy. And come here. And that boy, he came. She brought him. She said, Lord, if you give me a, give me a boy, I'll give him back to you. I give him back to you. Let me have that one instead. Did you come here? A little bit of one, yeah. No, this other. This one. Yeah, you come here. And when he when he got old enough, she kept her vow. She kept her vow and brought him back to the Lord. She gave that little boy. She said, Lord, I promise you that if you give me a baby, my husband and I are baby. I promise you I would go give it back to you. And now I have brought him to a, how old are you? Now, he's old enough now, Lord. So I brought him here. And Samuel, he was a high priest. He lived in the, he lived inside the church. And he put that little boy, that little boy didn't have no bed. So then the boy, he put that boy, said, come right here a minute. Samuel, he lived, and, and, and that boy just didn't have no way else, so he just lived right there in the house of God. Sit, sit, sit down right there. He just lived right there in church. And when Samuel went to his own uh, private place, the little boy didn't have no place, so he just laid down on the altar. Lay your head down there. Did, not knowing that's where God dwelt. Not knowing that altar is where angels would come and go. And where God's presence was at. And while, while he was passing by, the Lord said, oh, that's somebody. And the Lord looked at him and said, When he said that, the boy woke up and went to go check on that voice. He said, Eli, you called me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down again. Lay down again. So I didn't call you. Lay down. And he laid down again. And he heard that voice. You look like you're halfway asleep. You said, call his name. <laughs> again Samuel. heard that voice and he woke up again and he went over there going out of here so you did call me I heard you go where right he's at so what is it said you call me what you want 
And he said, I, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down again. And he did it a third time. And after three times, Eli recognized it was the voice of God calling that little boy. Samuel. Samuel. And God called him. And he says, next time you hear that voice, you said, speak, Lord, for your servant here. Ain't that something like God can speak to a boy? Well, that's what I'm telling y'all. God's going to speak to little boys. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon your sons and your daughters. You know what a son is? Somebody from 12 years and younger. 12 years and younger. That's what he's talking about. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Call him. And he began to, and the Lord began to speak to him and said, I'm going to put a word in you. And, and man, he gave him a grown-up word. Like he was a grown man. And he shook up Eli. He said, Eli, God told me this. And God told me you got your sons here. And this boy's just a little bitty boy. And Eli's sons, grown men, said, your sons is doing wrong. They, they, they ain't doing right. And Eli, you gonna, God's going to get you for being so backslidden and not doing what you. And, and God's going to, he's going to bring a, a judgment in this nation because he see all this evil and idolatry. Can you imagine all that coming out of the little boy? Amen. <laughs> but God is saying, I'm going to pour out my spirit. But not, not just the spirit of judgment, but I'm going to pour out my spirit and they are going to speak my word. And they are going to bring healing. And they're going to bring deliverance. And they're going to drive out evil spirits. I'm going to, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Because of the anointing. It was the anointing. It wasn't little David that slew that giant. It was that anointing. There was no David that slew that giant. Yes. God said, I'm going to use these little ones. Because, hey, it's getting late. Time is getting late. I'm going to go out there and put my spirit up on these children. Uh-oh, we're oh, getting real late. I'm going to go out there and get babies and put my spirit up on them. Oh, it's getting real late. I'm going to get these. I'm going to these nursing home and bring them out of the nursing home. Well, it's getting pretty late. I'm going to use these, these handmaids. I'm going to use these daughters. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to put my spirit in them until they're going to have such an anointing, such a spirit up on them. They're going to be like Mary. Mary didn't go around looking for a boy, praying. She went around giving herself to God. And God put his spirit on her. And when he did, the Holy Ghost went inside of her. And, and she became pregnant with the word. And she gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Well, that's what's going to happen. God's going to put his spirit upon these young ones. He's going to use everybody. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons, daughters, servants. Handmaid, young man, oh, I'm gonna, and it's gonna be the anointed that's gonna heal the sick. The anointed gonna drive the devils out. The anointed is gonna curse the forces and the powers of Satan. God's gonna use you. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be by your might, not gonna be by your power, but by my spirit, said God. Hallelujah. I'm gonna do a quick work. I'm gonna put them in. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon these little ones. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon the old man. You ain't no old man. Well, you know, you're about the only one I can see in here. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon sons. Upon daughters. Servants. Handmade. I'm a young men. Young men are going to see visions. Hallelujah. Are y'all listening? Young men are going to see visions. Hallelujah. I'm going to put a fire in them. And that fire is going to burn up sicknesses. Going to burn up diseases. That fire is going to burn out the strongholds of the devil. Going to burn out 
all this evil. That's right. I'm going to give power unto a people and they're going to go forth into every city, every nation, every tongue, every kid, right? And they're going to preach to me. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. I went about doing good, healing all that was sick, all that was oppressed of the devil. And when they begin to preach to me, I'm going to confirm the word. And when I confirm the word, sickness is going to be healed. Demons are going to come out. The powers of Satan is going to be broken and driven off of them. I'm going to give power to a generation that's not going to be ashamed of me. I'm going to give power to a generation that's going to stand up against the darkness, against the curse, against the evil that's in this generation. Jesus. Y'all better clean your ears out. You finna hear God talking. Get in a quiet place. Turn that TV off. Turn that cell phone off. Turn them electronic devices off. And get in a still in a quiet place. And hear God's voice. God says, Samuel said, Lord, what you want? I'm just a boy. He said, do you? He said, I'm just a kid. I can't do nothing. He said, don't say, I'm just a child. It's going to be me. Not you. It's going to be me using you. It's not going to be you. Quit telling God, you're just a boy. You're just a girl. No, no. It's going to be by my spirit. I'm going to put my word in you. I'm sending my word, and my word is going to heal. My word is going to save. My word is going to deliver. Jesus, at the age of 12, he was stirred up to do something for God. Wasn't he? He was so zealous until his mom and dad and stepdad looking for him. He'd been missing all day long. Can you imagine having Jesus not, I mean, gone, you, you, all day long you're shopping. You're going to Walmart, you're going here, you're going there. You're, you're so clattered with the curls of this life. And you got Jesus right. He, 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 what a, here's the son about to go down. Where is he at? Where is Jesus at? He's the one that's going to bring salvation. He's the one that's going to bring deliverance. Where is he at? We got so busy in Christmas. We got so busy in all of these things of this life. Until we forget, we got somebody with us that, that, that God is nurturing, that God is developing, that God is maturing, that God is going to use to bring revival, to bring healing, to bring deliverance, to heal the sick, to open the eyes of the blind, to cast out devils. God's got somebody right now that he is developing, that he's raising up. Hallelujah. That's right. Samuel, did you finish reading that? That the Lord called Samuel. The Lord called Samuel. And he answered. And he answered. Here am I. Here am I. And he ran into Eli. The Lord is calling you. But saints, let's not be so caught up with all this stuff the world is caught up with. Let's clean out our closets. Let's clean out our ears. Let's get in a place where we can be spiritually in tune to the voice of God. Because he's going to start speaking to some of you. He's fixing to come to you at 3 o'clock in the morning and tell you to get up and pray. He's fixing to come to you at 12 o'clock at night when you're tired. He's going to come to you and you're going to feel that impression saying, get up and pray. Don't just roll over and go back to sleep. Here I go, speak, speak. Your servant here. Too many people out there. Yes, the Bible says the laborers are few. The harvest is right, but the laborers are few. I need somebody that'll come to my altar like Samuel and that'll sleep in the altar if they have to. Or that'll make their bed in the altar. Huh? You watch it. 
fixing to happen. Here's another one. Genesis 22 and verse 1. Well, you get that Genesis 22 and verse 1. And Brother James, you get that one. And Brother Josh, you get Genesis 22 and 31. 22 and 20, uh, 31 and 11. But Genesis 22 and verse 1. Came to, pass. came to pass after these things, after these things that God did tempt Abraham. That God tempt, and the word tempt means tested yes. Abraham. And said unto him, said to him, Abraham. Abraham. Uh huh. And he said, Behold, here am I. He said, Behold, here am I. See, God is now called in Abraham. Yes. Bible says, Make your calling and make your election sure. A lot of times, God wants to talk to us, but I'm, 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 we've got too much television in our mind, too much uh, entertainment, too much music, too much this and that. Come and seal yourself, and you'll hear God's still small voice calling you. And God said, Abraham. What did Abraham do? You finish reading it. And he said, take now thy son. Abraham. What did he said, Abraham. And what did Abraham say? Here I am. Here am I. Here I am. Abraham. See, when God called you, you got to be willing to obey him. You got to be willing to, to do whatever he says to do. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If God call you, then don't make an excuse. Sound too sleepy. Don't make an excuse and say, wait a minute, God, I got to put you on hold. I got this one to talk to. I got that. You don't put God, you don't put nothing in nobody and before God, do you? Not even yourself. What did he say now? Here I am. Here I am. When God calls us, are we going to be at a place where we can surrender and say, here I am? Huh? Here I am. Yeah. Go ahead. And he said, take now thy son. Take your son. Thy only son. Your only son. Isaac. Isaac. Whom thou lovest. Uh-huh. And give thee into a land of Moriah. And I want you to take him and offer him as a sacrifice. Go in. The, the, the one you, you waited for him for many, many years. You and Sarah. Here you are, Abraham. You are now over a hundred. And Sarah, she's, she's a hundred and something. Cause they had, she had it when she was married. And Abraham was kicking a hundred. And now Isaac has come up. And now God has told Abraham and Sarah that out of Isaac was going to come the seed. Was going to come kings. And was going to come the Messiah. And was going to come a great army. And now God is telling Abraham, you go and kill Isaac. Abraham didn't question God, did he? God said, take him and offer him. And that's what he did. He, talk, he took him and offered him. That's what God was looking for. Somebody that would say, here am I. Here I am. What do you want? What do you want? I want the, the most precious thing you've got. I want the most precious thing in your life. I want that that all your hope is upon. All your dreams is upon. I want Isaac. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, sisters, present your bodies to God, a living sacrifice. God said, I'm looking for somebody to, that I can use to, to push back the darkness, to push back the demon powers. I'm looking for somebody that I can put my spirit in, that I can put my north in upon, that they can be a witness for me. They won't be ashamed of me. They won't be ashamed to stand up and testify. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel. God called Paul, Paul, Saul, why are you out there persecuting my people? And, and, and Saul, who are you, Lord? Who are you? I'm Jesus, whom you persecuted. What do you want me to do? That's another one. What, do you, what would you have me to do? And God told Saul, Saul, you're going to take 
of my message the Jesus that you have persecuted you've locked people up you put them in jail you persecuted me now the same Jesus that that you have had men to be stoned you had Stephen stoned to death you had them put in prison but now I'm going to take you. you you've been the devil's number one man but now I'm going to take you and put you in my kingdom and you're going to be my number one man and you're going to go out there and you are going to tell people Amen. Hallelujah. Who you don't want to be in a place where God called you and you said, here am I. He said, you're going to have to suffer for me. Because all this you brought up on my church, now you got to suffer for me, Saul. You know what God did? Bright light appeared to him, Saul. And a voice spoke out of that light. Sent for one, go to Joppa. Sent for one name, Ananias. Didn't he? And he sent for Ananias. Ananias heard that voice saying, Ananias, I'm sending somebody away to take the scales off of his eyes. He has done a lot of damage to my people. Ananias is the one. I'm sending Saul. Who? Saul was Saul. He's the one that's he, he, he killing us. He's persecuting us. He's he running us. He, that's why we're hiding because of Saul. Don't worry about it. I've spoken to him. Have, he heard my voice. And he heard one Ananias is coming to, to tell him. And Ananias said, okay, Lord. Whatever you see, that's what God looking for somebody that'll obey. Not ask a bunch of questions, but that'll be willing and obedient and do whatever. See, God can raise up young people because they don't have a bunch of pride. They don't have a bunch of, they're not stuck up. They don't have a bunch of uh, snottiness, and they don't have a bunch of uh, excuses. Well, Lord, I got a job. Well, Lord, I got a wife. Well, Lord, I got a husband. Well, Lord, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, they're going to be so hungry and so serious. They're going to be willing to go. They're going to be willing to do. They're going to hear God's voice. That God's going to call your name, and you're going to say, here am I. And God's going to say, I got something for you to do. What are we going to say? What are we going to do? That's why I'm telling you to give yourself in prayer. Give yourself in the word. Give yourself in holiness. Give yourself to God so you can be one of them. He's going to do a quick work and he's looking for somebody that he can execute his word through. That he can execute his power through. That he can execute. That he can lift up Jesus to the sick to the lost, to the suffering, to the bound, to the afflicted, to those that are out there on the way to hell, on that broad road. He's looking for somebody to bring them on that straight and that narrow path. Yes. Here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. Ananias. When you say that a minute ago, Ananias. Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He raised the dead. He cast out devils. He brought life. He cleansed. Oh, how to tell me, Ananias. Ananias told so. And the scales fell off of his eyes. People out there got scales on their eyes. They can't see their way out of trouble. They can't see their way. They were looking for peace, looking for love, looking for deliverance, looking for help. But they need an Ananias to come to them and to, and to take the scales off their eyes. That's what God's going to do. He's going to call you to raise you up and send you out there and tell you you have to go out. No, God, this one is a murderer. No, Lord, this one is a thief. This one is a perverse. This one is not. God said, uh-uh, I'm going to do a work and a wonder that's going to cause people to... to that's right. 
Young people ain't gonna question. They're just gonna be bold and stand up and tell it like it is. I went to a, when I was a young man, I went to the meanest city in Dallas. I went to Dallas, Texas, and meet on a on the roughest street. Street called Spring Avenue, Spring Summer. And took another young man with me. And we went out there. And we saw um, they were gambling. And we took the um, we took the the, um, the the dice and we overthrew the table and told him, Jesus wants y'all to be delivered. He wants to save y'all. I mean these was these was some hardcore people. And we overthrew the table because I had read it how Jesus done that. And I wouldn't step none of them. That's right. And, and, and over through, and, and one of them, uh, somebody had a stick. And you could tell, some of them wanted to. They were so shocked. But you know, God had mercy on our ignorance. We left that. And went down the streets of Dallas. I saw a man with a big old quarter beer. Back then, y'all don't know what a quarter beer is, do you? But one, you know, Code 45, big old quarter. Code 45. Huh? Yeah, Mark Licker. Big man. And I looked at him and I said, sir, you don't quit drinking that beer, that Mark Licker, you're going to go to hell. He looked at me. Boy, if I didn't think you was real, you'd be on this floor. You'd be on this ground right now. I looked at him and I said, sir, I'm real. <laughs> That's it. God had mercy. And you know, he dropped that malt liquor and let me pray for him. Tears went in his eyes. Hallelujah. Now we got even bolder. He said, I know what has a hooker house says, Come on. I said, let's go. We went to this place where these hookers was at. And uh, we, we told him, they said, you know, y'all want some business? We said, yeah. They said, come on to our house. We went in their house. And uh, they were getting ready to undress. And I said, before y'all undress, I'll tell you what, let's get on our knees and pray first. <laughs> and I grabbed them by the hand when they couldn't let go. And they tried their best to let my hand go, but they couldn't. And they got on my knees and I prayed. And they, and they broke. And they cried. Oh, yeah. And one of them said, I'm a backslider. Since God sent you here, say, I'm a backslider. I don't have a business being a prostitute. I don't have a business doing what I'm doing. And, and I was asking the Lord to forgive you. Ask God to save you. Ask Him right now to fill you with the Holy Ghost. See, young and zealous, I didn't have no more sense than that to go to a hooker house, to go to a gambling house, or to go in front of a, a, a liquor store and begin to go out there and preach in front of a, a liquor store. And the man brought in, they had a bad place, and he brought in all that stuff out there. I said, I don't know what to do with all this. And I just began to take the microphone and begin to preach to him. And all these people, you know, they was amazed. A little boy, young boys coming in to where there was hardcore sinners at and begin to talk to them about Jesus and begin to preach to them about Jesus. Well, it's, it wasn't us. It was that anointing. It was lifting up Jesus. That's what's going to bring in. Lifting up Jesus. I'm going to put my spirit in you and you're going to stand up for me. I'm going to give you a boldness. I'm going to give you a mouth of wisdom. I'm going to give you what it takes. You're going to go out there to the sick and you're going to lay hands upon them. My sister-in-law was sick and had been had gotten shot in the stomach and she was in terrible pain. And this young man that was with me laid his hands upon her and the pain instantly left her. God gave her a healing and God saved her. Her next door neighbor had shot her in the stomach. I went on to the next door neighbor. She was 
God said, I put you among thieves. I put you among snakes. I send you among scorpions. I send you among serpents. That's right. And I will give you power. God gave us the anointing and the power to arrest them spirits that had them people bound. And the devil in them couldn't do nothing. The devil in them was paralyzed. That's what the gospel does. That's what the anointing does. It paralyzes the devil. It stops the devil. I'm going to get power. I'm going to get power. You shall receive power. You shall lay hands on the sick. You shall pass out devil. It's going to happen in your generation. He finished doing quick work and do it. Cut it short in righteousness. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world is lost. Darkness is on the earth. Cross darkness is on people. I've got to have somebody I can put my word in. I can put my spirit in. I can put my anointing in. I'm fixing to raise me up an army. I'm fixing to raise me up people that's not going to be ashamed. That's not going to bow their knees to the devil. That's not going to compromise. I've got to have somebody that will stand up for me. They got to have somebody they going to they gonna spend all their time in front of television. They going to spend all their time on that, on that, on oh, what you call that thing? Huh? What? What? I don't know what that is. Huh? Oh, video games. I got to have somebody going to spend all their time them video games. What else? Huh? What? Phones. Phones. iPhones. What else? What? TikTok. Tick Facebook. What? Snapchat. What's Snapchat? Huh? They will spend all their time on Snapchat. On what? Instagram. What else? Huh? What do you say? Be careful now. That's a name my uncle gave me when I was a boy. Called me Twitter. You better quit meddling. <laughs> I don't ever want anybody to call me that name. Twitter. <laughs> you hear me? I don't want to hear that name. Not going to spend all that time out there on twiddling. What else? Huh? YouTube. Netflix. Look at what I'm saying there. Netflix. Even your Xbox. Man, you see these little bitty ones there? See, you know what I'm talking about. I gotta, I'm going to put my spirit in them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to burn out all this Netflix. I'm going to burn out all this Twitter. I'm going to burn out all this PlayStation. I'm going to burn out all this tap, iPad. What? Wait, let me get for what? Get down on the other level. What you say? iPad, PlayStation. Okay. Okay. We, 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 we. But I'm going to put my spirit in it. And instead of them so covered up and all this here technology, yeah. I'm going to have them covered up in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Caught up in my spirit. I'm going to give them power over drugs. I'm going to give them power over demons. I'm going to give them power over sicknesses. I'm going to give them power over diseases. I'm going to give them power against lust, against LGBTQ. I'm going to give them power against all this perversion. I'm going to give them what it takes to stand up. Hallelujah. God said it, call your name. What are you going to say? Huh? Go say, here am I. You know, a little Stanway, yeah. That was a, y'all heard me say this time and time again. How that was a, a little baby. Bring that little baby out here. How that was a little baby. His mother had this baby. And in this house right here. And in this house, there was a uh, a relative that was standing in the house with him, a, a, a demon possessed little girl. And at three o'clock in the morning, she'd get up, tamp the house, tamp the dishes. And the mother would wake up in the morning and wonder who done it? Who done it? Nobody knew what, 
and, and didn't know this little girl was demon possessed. But this little bitty baby, this little bitty baby, she lifted her hands up. And when she did, that demon and that girl began to cry with a loud voice and they began to come out. See, out of the mouth of babes, little bitty Jesus. 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 The little baby lifted, lifted up her hand. When that neighbor lifted up her hand, that demon come out. Well, that's what's fixing to happen. These little bitty ones, God's going to put something in. He said, time is running out. I'm going to use everybody. I'm going to use the young. I'm going to use the old, the male, the female, the young. I'm going to use them all. I'm going to do a quick work. I'm going to give them power. He said, forbid that not, for such is the kingdom of God. Suffer the little children to come unto me. I'm going to give them what it takes to stand up for me. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands, the Lord, hear my eye. Speak to me. Use me. Put your anointing in me. Put your spirit in me. I want to be one of them sons, daughters, servants, handmaids, young men and old. Lord, use me. Put your Holy Ghost in me. Put your power in me. Come on, talk to him a minute. You talk to everyone in the close your eyes. Talk to him a few minutes. Talk to him a few minutes. Yes, Lord. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands. Everybody stand on your feet. Come on, let's offer ourselves tonight. The Lord is talking to us tonight. Jesus is looking for some Samuels. Lord, you're looking for some Abrahams. You're looking for some Saul's. Lord, you're looking for somebody to put your spirit in. You told us to set our affections upon things above and not on things in this earth. Lord, the people are lost. The, the world is lost. Lord, the world is in darkness. Lord, they're blinded. Lord, they don't know the way. They don't know the truth. They don't know that you are the life. Lord, but you're looking for someone. Lord, to put your spirit in. You're looking for someone yes. that will lift you up. Yes. Lord, you said if I be lifted up, I would draw all men out of darkness. All men out of sin. All men out of their sicknesses. Lord, you said the harvest is white. Lord, the hour is late, but the labors are few. Lord, help me to be a laborer. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, talk to them. Lord, I want to be a laborer. I want to be one of those that you can anoint. I want to be one of those that you can put your power in. Lord, I want to be one of those. Lord, that will drive out the devil out of somebody's life. Lord, I want to be one of those. Lord, that you can put your spirit in. Lord, you said not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. Lord, in these last days, Lord, there's a move of God coming. Lord, there's a great outpouring coming. Lord, we want you to rid those heavens and pour out your spirit so when the devil can be driven back, so diseases can be healed, so sicknesses can be healed. Lord, you're looking for somebody to offer themselves. Come on, saints, tell them tonight. Lord, I offer myself. Help me, Lord, to lay aside my weight. Help me to lay aside the sin. Help me to lay aside the television. Help me to lay aside the Xbox. Help me to lay aside the Netflix. Lord, and I myself to seek your face and get in the altars. Lord, like Samuel laying in that altar. Lord, and you call his name. You said Samuel. He said, you am I. Lord, help me to get in the altar and wait upon you. You said, my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. Lord, help me to humble myself tonight. Lord, I offer myself 
offer myself tonight. I offer my mind. I offer my spirit. Lord, you're looking for somebody that will sanctify, set themselves apart. Lord, like Mary did. She wasn't looking for no boyfriend. Lord, she wasn't looking to go out and hang out with her friends. She was looking to do something for you. Lord, she was looking to give herself to you. Lord, help us, Lord, to give ourselves to you by offering our bodies, by offering our minds, by offering our hearts, by giving you our all. In the name of Jesus, Lord, the world is lost. The hour is late. Lord, you ain't gonna, God, you ain't gonna wait on us. You're looking for somebody in our hunger, looking for somebody in the thirst. Somebody, Lord, God, that will give themselves to you. Help us, Lord, to give ourselves to you. Come on, saints, talk to them. Come on, pray. You pray. You cry out. You call upon them. God in the name of Jesus. Father in the name of Jesus. Oh, help us, Lord, to be like Samuel. Jesus, help us to make up in our hearts and our minds. Give ourselves to you. You said the harvest is white, the labors are few. Lord, help us, Lord, send forth labors into your harvest. Jesus, so we can be a witness, so that we can be a testimony, we can be a light to this generation. In the name of Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Come on, tell them. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, burn up the child. Lord, burn up the old man. Burn up the old desires. Lord, burn up the flesh so your will can be done. Your kingdom can come in our lives. In this time and day that we're living in, in the name of Jesus, you said, except we humble ourselves as a little child. No, we ain't going to get this. We ain't going to enter in. Lord, I want to enter in. Help me to enter in. Help me to offer my body. While we pray, come on, let's reach out, saints. Just, just got words. Somebody's missing. Somebody took off, man, and they, they missing right now. Can't find them. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, whoever this soul is, whoever this person is, Jesus' name, Lord, send your word. Send your spirit. Send your mercy. Lord, drive them back home, Lord. Give them the mind to come back home, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus against his own anger. I plead the blood of Jesus against this old devil. Lord, they're trying to make him wander off. In the name of Jesus, send your angel. Send your mercy. Send your mercy, Lord, to bring him back home. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let it be so. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. God have mercy. God have mercy. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this word. Lord, grab somebody's hand. Everybody, somebody grab somebody's hand. We just touch and agree. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we touch and agree for this situation. God, let it be so, Lord. Lord, you know where they are. You know where they went. Lord, let your spirit search them out. Let your spirit bring them back. Lord, let your spirit, Lord, God, bring them back home. In the name of Jesus, safe and sound, untouched. We plead the blood of Jesus against this situation. We plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We touch and agree. You say, I'm too shall touch and agree. For one thing, Lord, they ask. they're going to have whatsoever they ask, and it shall be done. Let it be done. All in the name of Jesus. Let it be done. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. In Jesus' name, we Lord, we thank you for this word tonight. Come on, clap your hands. Give the Lord a good hand. Thank you, Jesus.